All right, let's keep going. Let's talk about exponents. If you want to see a detailed explanation of all the properties of exponents, uh, go to the file on the website 090.pdf, and it should be there for you, right on the website. Um, I'm going to go over a few properties really briefly, and then we're going to do a couple of problems. <clears throat> so the thing to remember about exponents is this. If you're given an expression like, say, x squared y cubed, and you want to simplify it, the only way that you can simplify this expression using uh, rules of exponents is if the two bases are similar, x and y are the bases in, these, in this case, or if the two exponents are the same. So either, I'll say it again, either you have to have the same base or the same exponent. Now it looks to me like you don't have the same base and you don't have the same exponent in this case. So there's not much you can do to simplify this. Uh, there are tricks that you can do, but for now, we'll just say there's not much you can do to simplify this problem. But what if you had x squared, y squared? Well, then there's something that you can do to simplify this problem. Since both the x and the y are squared, we can combine the x and the y together and square the whole thing. And that's one of your properties of exponents in your 090.pdf file. Now let's look at the example where you have the same base. In this case, the base in both cases is x. One is squared, one is cubed. They're different, different powers, but that's okay. We can still combine them. When you have similar bases and you have two terms that are multiplied by each other, you can just add the exponents. In this case, x to the power 2 plus 3, which is just x to the fifth power. That's another property of x. Uh, you can also do the same thing if two terms are divided by each other. The only difference is, instead of adding your exponents, you're going to subtract the exponents. Keep in mind, you have to have a similar base to do this. <coughs> in this case, you get x to the 2 minus 3 power. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So you get x to the negative first power. Now, you might remember that there's another property of exponents that involves negative powers. Anytime you have a negative power, what you can do is move this term into the denominator and make the power positive. So what that means is we can move that term from the numerator to the denominator and change the power from negative 1 to positive 1. Of course, you usually don't have to write the power positive 1 on a term, so you can just call it 1 over x. <coughs> So go to 090.pdf to see all the uh, properties of exponents. Uh, those are the main ones, and uh, I want to do a couple of problems now. So let's try to do this. Let's try to simplify this problem. Um, 2xy cubed over 4x to the fifth. There's an expression for you. It's got lots of x's and y's in it, uh, a couple of constants as well, and we want to simplify it as much as we can. So it looks like what we can do uh, to simplify this problem, uh, if you remember your order of operations even, you could um, try to get rid of these parentheses. Now go to your list of properties of exponents, and you'll see that when you have a big term with, with lots of different parts in it, all of it's cubed. What you can do is split it up into three pieces. Uh, you can cube the 2, you can cube the x, and you can cube the y. So you can split this up into 2 cubed, y cubed, and x cubed. The denominator we can keep the same for now. And that's what we get. Now, it looks like we have a couple of similar bases. Uh, these x's have the same base. Also, these y's have the same base. It also looks like we have a constant here. Uh, 2 cubed is just going to be 8, right? And we have a 4 in the denominator. So we can do a little bit of cancellation there as well. So let's split this thing up into a couple of pieces. Let's take the constants out. 2 cubed over 4. We're going to multiply that by the term with the x's in it x cubed over x to the fifth. I'm going to multiply that by 
y cubed over y. Notice we have the same thing uh, down here as we did up here. They're the same exact thing, we just have rewritten it a little bit. Split it up into three different pieces. Now each one of these three pieces can be simplified. Uh, two cubed is just eight. So we have eight over four, which of course you know is two. X cubed over X to the fifth, we can use the property of exponents that says when you have a similar base, you're dividing two terms, you can subtract their exponents. X to the three minus five power. This term, again, we have the same problem. Uh, we have the similar base, different powers, we're dividing, so we can subtract the powers, keeping in mind that there's a power of one on that y there. So we get y to the three minus one power. Now we can put everything together and simplify this. Uh, 8 divided by 4 is just 2. 3 minus 5 is just negative 2. So we have x to the negative 2. And 3 minus 1 is 2. So we get y to the second power, y squared. Uh, so there are a couple ways we can write this final answer. We can write this as uh, 2 x to the negative 2 y squared. Of course, all of these are equal to each other, sorry. Um, so we could write it as 2x to the negative 2y squared, or we could write it as uh, 2y squared over x squared. Notice what we did there is we used the property uh, of exponents that says when you have a negative exponent, you can move that whole term to the denominator and make the power on the positive. So either one of these two answers is perfectly fine. Why don't you try one on your own? Uh, why don't you try to simplify? Two a squared b cubed squared over, oh, let's say um, two a to the fifth b squared. See if you can simplify that as far as you can. And come back and see how you did.